Hey everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we're going to do a little bit of a follow-on video to one that I previously did related to the top 10 console commands I use in mod reviews, how-to videos, or map tours. But today we are going to be very specific and talk about production and production commands. But before that, this video is brought to you by Thompson Gaming. Thank you for being a farm baron. So there's a few prerequisites that we need to make sure that you have set up before you can make use of these console commands. First, you need to make sure that you enable the dev console, and I have a video on how to do that. I'll put a tick up in the upper right corner on how PC players can enable the dev console. It's pretty quick, it's pretty simple. If you need to pause this video and go check that one out beforehand, go right on ahead. And then the second thing that you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you set up the game to launch with the slash cheats command. That way I can be sure that these commands are gonna be available to you once you enable the dev console and you launch into the game. In the previous video I did about the top 10 console commands, I demonstrate how to add slash cheats to your Epic launcher, to the Steam launcher, and to the shortcut if you have digital download or physical media copies. So again, go check the tick in the upper right corner for the information on how to do that. Now, once you have the dev console enabled and once you have slash cheats set in the start parameters, then we'll be able to go ahead and be sure you're gonna be able to use these commands. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up the dev console and the very first command that I wanna show you today is GS production points list. And what this will do is it is going to list out all of the production elements that are available on whatever given map that you are currently on. We are on Elm Creek and as a result, we have 10 production points available to us the biogas plant, baconry, carpentry, cereal factory, dairy mill, oil, grape processing unit, spinnery grain mill, and the sawmill. We are here in front of the cereal factory, and that is what we're going to use for this particular video's demonstration purposes. I use this command extensively when I load up a brand new mod map. I want to see how many production elements are built into the map. This is going to tell me at a glance exactly how many production elements and what those production elements are by basically listing them all out in the dev console. And now that we have this list, we're going to reference this for our other commands. The next command that I'm going to set is GS production point set owner. And what we need to do for this is we need to specify a production point identifier and a farmland ID value. Since I want to own the cereal factory, I am going to hit four because that is the production point ID in our list above. And the owner is going to be set to farmland ID one if you are on single player. If you are in multiplayer, you're going to have to figure out what your farmland ID is by going to the screen that shows you your multiple farms and just count left to right until you get to your farm. One is gonna be the very first farm on the left of the screen. Eight will be the very last farm on the right. Now, once I hit enter here, we now own the cereal mill. So if I list out the production points again, you'll see the cereal mill has now moved down to point 10, but we also now have owner and it's listed as farm ID of one. So if we come here to our production chains, you will see we now own the cereal factory and it is just that simple. Now you may want to add product to the cereal factory and specifically the cereal factory takes honey, raisins, oat, corn, and outputs cereal. So it has four inputs and one output. Well, there is a very easy way that you can add inputs, and that is through the use of a GS production point set fill level. 
And if we just hit enter, we're going to see how we can use this command. We can set fill level. We need the production point identifier. Again, we needed to have listed at out. So our production point identifier for the serial factory is now 10. And then we can go to fill type name. And then we specify the fill level. Now we could hit all. And then we could specify a fill level of, let's say, 10,000. What that is going to do is it's going to add 10,000 honey, raisins, oat, corn to the incoming material, but it's also going to add 10,000 to the cereal output. Now we could come here and then change this and say just, I want honey to be 10,000. And now, okay, so took a little time to realize the issue I had was I had an extra space. I had two spaces between fill level, production point set fill level, and the production ID. So it was not recognizing that I was giving a production point. So now that we have made sure that we've got that fixed, we're going to go to oats, and we're going to say oat. And now we should have 10,000 oats in our production facility. If we come back up here to honey, get rid of that space, we're going to be able to put 10,000 units of honey in our production facility. And you'll see that the 10,000 is different for both because they hold a different quantity. So if we weren't sure how much product, we could just go with 100,000 honey, which is going to be well more than it will hold. And we will see that now honey is 30,000. We could come here and we can add raisins. 100,000 units of raisins. We can add 100,000 units of maize. And we can add 100,000 units of oat. And now you can see that as far as storage capacity goes, this particular facility will hold 30,000 units of honey and raisins, 60,000 units of oats and corn. We can also come over here to the output. And if I wanted to make sure that the cereal pallets were spawning properly, then I can come up here and I can just say cereal and I could spawn out a thousand units of cereal. Again, if I didn't have the complete inability to spell anything correctly. We now have a pallet of cereal. So let me go ahead and spawn out another pallet of cereal. That I can just go ahead and spawn out 8,000. And there you go. So that will demonstrate how you can spawn out inputs and spawn outputs with that command. And then the final command that I want to show you really relates to how do you know if you set this to say distributing or you have upline product and you set that to distributing. Where does it all go? How do you know how it's all going to map out? Well, the last command is GS production points print auto delivery mapping and what we're going to see here is that maize is distributed to the cereal factory honey is distributed to the cereal factory oat to the cereal factory and raisins to the cereal factory we only own one production facility let's do that one more time with the production mapping and let's get somewhere we have a decent contrast. And if we scroll this up, you're gonna see that wheat is distributed to the grain mill, barley to the grain mill, oat 
is distributed to cereal factory and the grain mill. Canola is going to the oil, as is sorghum is going to the grain mill, grapes, olives. Sugar beet cut is going to, if it was distributed, would go to the biogas plant. Milk is going to be distributed to the dairy and the bakery. Sugar is going to the bakery and the dairy. And this allows you to get a little bit of an idea if you own multiple production points, where would things go if you told it to distribute? So guys, I hope that was useful and helpful. I'll give you a little bit of insight how you can use various console commands in order to troubleshoot and test production facilities if you are testing them before you bring them into your main game save, which I highly recommend. I highly recommend you have a test game save that you put new mods in, you get a feel for how they work, you understand how they work, and then incorporate them if they check out into your main game save. Just dropping random things into your main game save, that is pretty risky because I tell you, I have heard so many times people say about how they have completely corrupted their game save and it ends up being a messed up mod that they had recently added and hours, hundreds of hours, maybe even thousands of hours are lost. So until next time, happy farming.